Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Flipped Teacher Professional Learning. We're going to change it up today and we're going to have a look at something that is a lot of fun for the students and is uh, quite a bit of fun for us as a teacher as well. We are going to be taking a look at Kahoot. Now typically you will tell your students to go to this website, kahoot.it. This is the screen that they'll look at. Yes, it does change colours. Uh, there is some music in the background, typically. Now, what we want to look at, though, is this website here, getkahoot.com. That website looks like this. You do, of course, need to sign up. The signing page looks like this. You do obviously need to put in your email address that you have registered with. Now, once you've signed in, this is the screen that you'll be taken to. You can create a new Kahoot here by clicking on one of these options. You can see basic statistics of your Kahoots, you can see recent results, there's a range of options down here, feel free to explore that at your leisure. Part of the power with Kahoot is that you can make your own. You can tailor it to really specific things that you want to use it for, but what we're going to have a look at to show you what Kahoot looks like and how it works is the public Kahoots, just here. These are Kahoots that people all around the world have made and have made available for other people to use. Let's have a look for Kahoots about maths. Let's look for ones that are designed for school audiences. You can select any one of those. Let's hit search. And here's a range of Kahoots about maths that have been made by other people. Now there's some here that you can see that are in a different language. Down here at the bottom, I can filter by language. That changes the results again, filters them through, and here we go. Uh, let's have a look at this one here. Place value, thousands, hundreds, and tens. This tells you how many times it's been played, how many times it's been favorited, and how many times it's been shared, which means it's been shared to others. Now here, you can have a preview to self to make sure you're happy with the content. You can see the questions, you can see the answers if you click on show answers, you can see how long has been assigned to each question, how many answer options there are, and if an image has been assigned, to the question, you can see the image thumbnail here as well. Play, preview, favorite, there's some sharing options. To show you what Kahoot looks like and how it works, we're gonna actually play it. By clicking on preview, it opens up another tab and it will split my screen up into two sections. This is what the participants will see. This section here, this is what will be seen on the front screen. So typically speaking in a classroom, the students will have their smart device, their tablet, their laptop, whatever it may be, this is what they see. Using the projector at the front of the room, or if you have a something like a Promethean panel or a smart board, out the front, this is what the participants will see. You have some option. So let's launch. Now, this is what, still, this is what the participants will be seeing. It tells you down the bottom. Get your devices out. Join the game pin. It takes a little bit of time to connect, and there's the game pin. So what the participant needs to do now on their device is enter that game pin, 00602, enter. There you go. So we now have nickname. How you do this is up to you. I do ask my students to put in their actual names. Okay, go. You're in, there you go, there's me there. So your students' names as they pop up, uh, as they connect will pop up here on the screen. If you're not happy with a participant's username, you can click on it and that will kick them out and they will then need to re-enter. Up the top here, hit the game pin will remain. If you have set that function, it will remain at the top. Now, if you have set Kahoot to proceed automatically, it will proceed in whenever there's a lag, uh, or I believe about 15 seconds between people registering but you can also set it to go through manually, which is what I've done, so let's start. Here we go, here's the question. To participants need to get ready, place values. Question one of eight, how many tens are in this number? The question's loading on the participant's screen. Here we go, we've got an image. This is obviously the question that we're looking at, and these are the options. The participants need to look at the image, in this case, look at the image, work out which one of these is the correct answer, and then on their device, tap or click the relevant option. So let's have a look. How many tens are in this number? Hundreds, units, tens. One, two, three, four. Four is the red one. So on my device, I, if it was an actual device, I would tap. In this case, I'll click the red option. It tells me straight away that it's correct. It shows you how many people selected each option. It shows you the correct option as well. 
and you can see the game pin down the bottom still appearing. So let's go through this fairly quickly. There's a scoreboard. Question 2 of 8, what is this number? And again, question 2 is loading. Here we go. 1, 2, 3, 4, 500, and 1, 2, 3, 40, 4. I select with the red one. Oops, there we go. I'm doing the wrong thing. I selected the red one. Bam, there we go. There's the answers. Now, when you obviously have multiple people involved in this, a classroom for example, it won't show them that they've got the answer wrong or correct straight away. It will only bring that this screen here up when either time has run out or when everybody has answered. It will when either of those two conditions have been met, it will move to this screen here. The other thing that I do love about Kahoot is that you have the ability to look at the results. And that's part of why I think it's really powerful. Over here on the right hand side, I can see my recent results. So as a teacher, if you decided to use this as a summative assessment task, I can go in and I can have a look at the results. So here we go, my recent results. On the 12th of October, I did one with my students called Internet Fundamentals 2. I have the options to either download the results or save the results to Google Drive. Now, when you do that, it gives you the option to have a look at the details, see which students selected which option, um, how long it took them, and it gives you the ability to assess their understanding. This is also a really useful activity as a pre-learning assessment um, at the beginning of a unit, and that's typically how I use it myself. And this is what it looks like. Correct answers, incorrect, their score, questions across the top, answers, obviously if it's green they got it correct, red they got it wrong, scroll across the side for more data, overall performance, so this is the overall for the cohort, for the class, for the group, percentage, correct, percentage, incorrect, and the average score. And then you can switch down the bottom, switch tabs down the bottom to look at individual questions and student results on individual questions. That's a really powerful function that you do have access to uh, and I would strongly recommend that if you're going to use this uh, that you do utilize that process. Uh, it does take a little bit of time obviously to look at that data but I believe that it's quicker than handing out worksheets or handing out paper tests marking them and marking them individual. This also gives you the opportunity to have a discussion about questions as you go through, particularly if you set it to a manual process, whereby it doesn't go to the next question until you click that it's uh, ready to go. You can have conversations about answers that people have suggested when they're incorrect. That's all I've got time for in this video. In the next one, we will look at how to actually create a Kahoot uh, and then how to share it out to other people and we might look at a few other features. Thanks very much.